Welcome again to Object Oriented Programming. This is part 12. And hey, congratulations, you got a programming job. We're going to use some new concepts in this exercise. We have discussed a whole lot of keywords and concepts so far. And this exercise uses quite a few of these. So let's review keywords and Python functions, in particular all those you see here. Range, format, enumerate, append, open, for, break. Let's look at concepts. We're going to print, but we're going to print to a file handler, not to the screen. Last exercise, we read from a file. Now we're going to write to a file. We're going to highlight it to reinforce it's a concept, not just some arbitrary word. Okay, anything that's a concept is going to be highlighted in yellow. Nested loops, that's a loop within a loop. Remember not to have infinite loops, those are bad, they never ever end. And dictionary type that we discussed way back on slide 41, it's similar to a list, but you reference the members by a name and not by an index number. So knights, we have Galahad and we have Robin, as opposed to, you know, knights sub zero and knights sub one, we have knights sub Robin, which is more legible. Quick review of range. Range takes up to three parameters, start, stop, and increment. It creates an anonymous list of integers. Start is inclusive, so it will be included in the list. Stop is exclusive, it will not be included in the list. So if you say range zero comma four, you will get four integers, zero, one, two, and three. Format uses the format specification mini language to make pretty strings, and there's a link there for you. Enumerate, this is a nice one. It creates a list of two element tuples. The first one is a counter that starts at zero. So if your list is the one there you see on the screen, it's just three items, 45, 83, and 125, then enumerate my list will create what you see here, 0, 45, 183, 2, 125, so you get a counter. Append is a method of the list object. Again, if my list is equal to the thing you see on the screen, then my list not, uh, append 99 appends 99 to the end of the list. Open opens a file, creates a file handler for you. A file handler, again, is a pointer to the file on the network, the hard disk, or wherever. Could theoretically be anywhere in the world with the internet. Most often used with the keyword with, that automatically handles opening and the file and all that good stuff. For in creates a loop that sequences through each member of the list. The temp variable will be replaced with each member in the list as the sequence um, goes through. In the sequence that the list is stored. Break stops a for or a while sequence immediately. And nested loops are loops that are made by for or while that exist inside another loop made by a different for or while. You could theoretically have hundreds of levels of nesting. I can't think of a single reason to use hundreds of levels, but there might be one, who knows. Let's talk about a brand new concept, single responsibility principle. Again, there's a link. Now this is a programming concept. It was defined as a module should be responsible to one and only one actor. A class should only have one reason to change. An actor here is used Loosely, the principle is about people. The role of an accountant, a salesman, and a database administrator vary. So a module that you create should only be responsible to one of those people. Otherwise, you will have a lot of different reasons to change a module and you'll have a difficult time keeping track of the changes. So we designed the module, we designed the module so that it's only responsible to one actor. And that gives us 
only one reason to change the class and you'll slowly ease into this concept as we design more programs. Separation of concerns, again another link, it's similar, it's related to the single responsibility principle. Modularity of code is achieved using the separation of concerns. A module should only do one thing. We call that the concern. It should do only one thing and it should do it well. If you do it like this, then the prior principle that it should only have one reason to change will also be fulfilled. Beginning programmers often believe that this is similar to, you may have heard the term reduced to the ridiculous or Reductio ad absurdum, which is a famous philosophical position dating back to the Greeks. Seriously, this goes all the way back to the Greeks. It's a common sales tactic. If you've ever heard, you need to buy this car, it's only one dollar a minute, or something like that, you're reducing it to the ridiculous. Separation of concerns does not need to get ridiculous. We don't need to break everything down to machine language, but we do want methods that are very, very simple to read, write, and debug. So let's do a new software project. The bean counters of the parachute factory, they've realized that sewing circles is a lot more expensive than sewing polygons. So the new line of parachutes will all be polygons from 6 to 60 sides. To save weight, the new suspension lines will be limited to a 20 pound test. The lines weigh 15 grams per meter. There will be one suspension line for each corner of the polygon. Suspension line length is 1.25 times the diameter. To save money, the parachutes will have the minimum number of sides. The material will be 60, 80, or 100 grams per square meter. The client wants the results in US and metric units. The parachutes will have a weight rating for a design descent rate of 3 meters per second. NASA says that when the parachute opens, you get a 5G shock to the lines. Flat parachutes have a coefficient of drag of 0.95. Customers order parachutes by the diameter, not by the polygon side length. You're hired to create the software that will incorporate all of these changes to the catalog. You need to calculate the number of sides, total weight of materials, diameter required, suspension line length. And you need to create a catalog for payloads from 100 grams to 1,000 grams, stepping at 100 grams. And you're going to use 100 GSM nylon. You're going to go 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, all the way to 5 kilograms with 80 GSM nylon. 5, 10, 15, all the way to 100 kilograms, you know, which would be like a heavy person, with 60 GSM nylon. Well, this, this is a challenge. So I want you to look at the, you know, pause the video, look at all the requirements we have here. Of course, you don't remember what the area of a regular polygon is, so you brush off your old trigonometry book, you figure out the relationship between the polygon sides and lengths, and sure enough, you figure out that for the area of a polygon with more than three sides, so square, pentagon, and so on and so forth, the area is what you see there. And if you want to match a circle of the same area, S becomes... 2 times r times the square root of blah, blah, blah. So let's have some, uh, let's throw some ideas out for your new software project. We're going to add some methods. In parachute stuff, we're going to add a method to calculate the minimum parachute diameter that's necessary. In physics stuff, we're going to add a method that figures out the minimum area of a falling object. In geometry stuff, we're going to add a couple of methods, one that calculates the area of a polygon, one that calculates the length, the side of a polygon, given a diameter and the number of sides. And we're going to take another method that's going to calculate what the diameter is if I give you the area of a circle. 
We're going to make a new file with a new class called Parachute Catalog. Yep, another exciting creative name for this project. Create two text files with the data. We're going to name them Parachute Catalog, and we're going to name them... Um, then we're going to add, add metric or USA to the end. I want you to only do the calculations one time. That's important because we don't want to overload the processor, right? We want to make these things as quickly as possible. A method should only do one thing. Use kilograms, meters, and seconds, and then convert to US units if you need to. So here's our parachute catalog. This is what the outline of this new class should look like. You see that the init, the constructor method, specifies all of those variables for the class. And then we have a couple of methods. Those variables store the information that the customer is giving you. Write lines and print lines, that's going to be procedures inside of those two methods. The main part of the program is shown below, it should only be a few lines. The constructor accepts the parameters and you can run this class without change when a parameter changes. Note the parameters are without units because Python does not automatically convert or carry units except for complex numbers. So something like what you see here is what we want. Print shoot lists shows a catalog on the screen. The shared folder has the output files for your review. This is what we want it to look like. And note that the file and the screen output are identical. I know this sounds like a difficult example or difficult um, homework, but if you look at the concepts that we've discovered and we have reviewed already, it shouldn't be impossible. The answer, of course, is in the shared folder, so hopefully this will give you a challenge. Okay, you have a good one, and I'll see you again on part 13.